Welcome guys to the Enjoying Your Life channel. Today we're going to get really creative. We are painting with wool. I'm at a fiber arts class. Let's get started. Press the like button, become a subscriber. I am at the Knot and Needle in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a family owned business by sisters. Very creative people. Thank you, Marcy. I think the most important thing which we've been trying to talk with everybody about as they come into our class is that everything that you make that's a creative thing mm -hmm. is beautiful. Everyone is unique and everything is cool. Mm -hmm. So um, we try not to have you know negative talk about our how we're crafting or what we're making because that's you know talking to ourselves and we want to say positive things to ourselves and what all we're doing so uh, we try to stay positive although you know if it's just you know if you just screwed up you screwed up that's okay but <laughs> <laughs> you just work through it <laughs> um but this is an easy craft it is very friendly um and you know, be beautiful at it so i have complete faith all right what you're looking at are a few different things mm -hmm. um first off these are finger protectors. Um, this, the two dimensional needle felting is not, they're not quite as important, but I like to give you the option to wear them because we are working with a very sharp needle. Um, and if you're good about not getting your fingers up into things, then this is not necessarily an issue. But do know if you stab yourself with that, it, is, it hurts a lot. It's a, it's a painful little needle. Um, but if you do stab yourself with it, you get to take a needle home because it's yours now. <laughs> But if you want to use these, you can. If they bother you, you don't have to. Um, but what you would do if you're going to do that is, um, are you right-handed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you put them on your left hand. And uh, I would do the one that's got the hard piece on your pointer finger because that is the finger you're most likely to poke if you do get to poking it. See, this one right here has got a little hard, like a reinforced bit. Um, but that's it. That's probably the one. Um, and I usually would do this one on this finger. Um, I did have a lady do this and then still poke that finger one day, but, <laughs> but you know, most people don't and that's all right. Um, I also have some shorter ones if those are really annoying to you, which you could use those as well. Um, so whichever works for you. Or not. Um, we are not doing the thing just yet, so if you want to set them aside until we're ready to do so, you can do that. Okay. Please do. Falling off my little skinny fingers. <laughs> <laughs> little fingers. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so they're there if you need them. Um, so this is the needle that we're going to be working with, and it's kind of an interesting needle in that if you pull it out and take a look at it, you'll see towards the end there's these little dots. Mm -hmm. Study that. Those are little barbs, and it's sort of like the theory of a fish hook, where they're sticking out this way so that as you pierce your piece those little barbs are catching the fibers of the spool and they are pushing it down into this piece of felt mm -hmm. and then when you pull it back out they stay there because they only go the barbs only go one way so they poke them down and then you can easily slide the needle back out and leave them in the place and that is actually what takes your loose wool and compacts it and attaches it to your piece and felts it together is actually the action of the needle pushing the, the pieces down in. Um, it's a very sharp 
Um, I do have a first aid kit should you poke yourself in it. We can get you bandaged up. <laughs> um, so this is all wool. It's called merino wool and it's wonderful and soft. Um, it is uh, very much processed. As you know, a sheep is curly. So to get it to this point, they do, you know, wash it and comb it and dye it and love on it and style it and all that. So, um, so this is very styled, but it is still actual wool. Um, and what we can do here is actually just grab up this whole little thing and just set it right in front of you. There you go. Um, when we're done, we should have a nice picture that we can then frame in this little hoop and you can actually hang that right on the wall. Um, or if you don't want a really hoop and you want to get it framed, you could do that with a, a matting, you know, around the opening mat and the actual picture frame. Uh, you just need one that's got a little bit of space in it. It can't be like a real tight or real, real mush your fibers and it won't look as good. It's better to have like almost like a shadow box and get a little bit of room in there. Um, so anyway, either one of those is fine. We are going to leave this right here for the moment. Um, we won't leave it there while we're felting but we'll leave it there to start out as we lay out our background um, just to make sure that we have our area covered and you're not going to have any blank spaces where you see the felt when you're done. Um, so what we're going to do, if you just look at this, background is just the blue, then there's a little bit of the, the orchid purple over the top of that, and you've got dark green, then you've got the light green stems, and then you've got your little flowers and then the little dots in the flowers. Mm -hmm. So basically we're just going to be building this up layer by layer until we have our piece done. Okay, so what we want to do, this is, uh, if you want to use your protectors, this is a good time to use them. Um, what you want to do is take your blue and you're just going to want to spread it out Lay it down. You can actually take these little bits and spread them lightly like that. You don't want to go too much because you don't want to be seeing a lot of the white behind. Um, but you're just going to want to lay it to where it covers over the edge of this hoop a little bit. And that way you'll be sure that when you actually put your hoop on that it's covering all the way to the edge here. And you can kind of fluff them and spread them out a little bit. You don't need a whole lot hanging over the edge of the hoop, but you do want some all the way around at the top here, just kind of this much of it. actually still just do a little laying on. We're going to go to our little orchid purple color and then maybe take about half of this. Maybe just separate it like that and just set the other half aside. There you go. And then from here, if you look, you see there's like these little wisps that just come up. Mm -hmm. We are going to just separate this again into little, little wisps and just lay them kind of randomly. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's a flower called foxglove that grows in yeah. kind of cooler places, but it's a long stalk and then it's got flowers like this, a cluster that goes up it in this color. And uh, so you know, it's, when, I, when I designed this, it's kind of I had in the back of my mind was thinking of like if there's foxgloves farther away in the garden, like you just see like these little purple stripes. No uh, right or right 
wrong way to lay them out just to sort of the random stripes so you don't have to use the whole thing you picked up Make sure we're covering the bottom of the ring and going up. So you see it only goes up part of the way. You just want to lay it down just so you're not seeing white behind it. And you can separate the pieces out like you did with the lavender, or you can kind of lay it in these chunks. all of it or should I have it thicker? Or? Um, what we'll probably do is um, make sure we get you coverage on the bottom. So see how the, the hoop is pretty well covered there? take those pieces mm -hmm. and if you want it shorter there's a way to actually pull it to 
glue is kind of funny. If you hold it real tight, mm -hmm. you're not going to separate it. But if you hold it looser, and just start, slowly start pulling, you'll feel it starting to give. And then there it goes. And then it's a tiny bit shorter than it was. And you can actually also take, if you wanted to make that shorter, you can even take that and do another pull. And start doing that to make it slower. started with the with the materials and supplies so stay tuned for more of the things <laughs> but it is fun to do. Yeah, I exactly. understand that. <laughs> so keep, just keep working. We will carry on. If you have any questions, feel okay. free to to swing by. I was by just right so here. anxious to yeah. check it out. Well, thanks. There are um, class schedules up by the front door where that denim shirt is. Okay. It should be January behind the December one that's sitting there. I feel like that this is, we're doing good with this. So what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is we're gonna take off the hoop, and this is how we do that. Put your hand right here. Just pick it up. Leave all that right there. And you can set it aside for the moment. Um, one thing that I like to do as I'm getting it filtered down is I'll just come in and check and just make sure that the wool is a little bit wider than the ring, just a little bit just so when you go to put it together, you don't see anything, any naked wool, any naked uh, white felt around the edges. So now we're gonna get on with the needle. Um, there's, this is a little bit narrower than what we're working on. So if at any point you wanna work at the top or bottom, you can actually just pick the whole thing up and scoot it down a little bit so that there is foam underneath. The thing with the needle is, mm -hmm. um, you know how a sewing machine just goes in and out and it's always, the needle goes in the same angle that it be like that where if you go in straight down you come out straight down go in come out um, there are times where you might want to go in at a little bit of an angle tuck something in just make sure you come back out at the angle because um, if you apply pressure to this at an angle it'll snap off um, if you break it it's okay I have another box of them but the goal is to you know minimize the whole no breaking of the needle thing so um, other than that um, when you go to poke in you maybe want to go about a quarter of an inch or so you don't have to go in far it's just enough to push some of these fibers into the piece of felt that's underneath So are y'all gonna have yarn 
Um, we are, yeah, currently we just have um, Rogue Tanya's Tanya's yarn that's oh, there. Oh. Um, we do have another gal that's going to be bringing us yarn, hopefully within a few weeks. Um, I'm not going to say it will be a yarn store, but we'd like to have, you know, a few different specialties. Okay. Kind of because I had told someone, oh, I think a yarn store store's coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, there's Chattanooga Yarn up at Hickson, and they do a pretty good job with the whole yarn thing. So, you know. Yeah, Hickson sounds so far away. It's, it's, I guess it's really yeah, not. It's, it's, not, it's only about 10, 15 minutes from here. So, um, yeah, she's she does a lot of yarn there, and, okay. and that's her thing. So, And what's know. it called? Chattanooga Yarn Company. It's in the Northgate Mall. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But they are, you know, they are more yarn focused. Okay. We are a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, I just moved here from St. Louis and okay. I'm missing good fabric stores. Oh, yeah. Fabric is hard to come by. You have to go over to um, Gun Barrel area over that way. So yeah. There's Joanne's and that but Joanne's not good better. Yeah. However, it's getting better. Yeah. They are getting better. That's good. Yeah. So, okay. And so your class, oh, here's your class. Yeah. Uh, there should be a January behind the December. Mm -hmm. Classes that are on that page coming. It just takes I'm on your time to work Facebook. And okay. Stuff. Yeah, we do try to make a post when we have some new things going on. This is where it kind of feels therapeutic to me. Mm -hmm. I like the sound. It's kind of a satisfying sort of. Okay, hey, thank you. You're welcome. And have a great day. Bye-bye. Something that's been stressing you out, you can visualize it and give it a little, <laughs> a little <laughs> poke. <laughs> now you want me to poke the whole yeah, all the way from top gonna, gonna do the whole thing, yeah. Um, get to a point where you need to do the bottom part that's hanging off. You can actually, this is kind of gets attached. You can just peel it right off and move it up. But you can see, looking at the other side, where it's poking the wool through. Someone said it was like a beetle ice strip. Okay. You know those things you put on your nose? <laughs> I, every time I look at that, I'm like, you are a strip. to be soft and fluffy and then they, they don't do an enormous amount of the actual felting. Mm -hmm. um, some people really like it to be tight and smooth um, and if that's your jam then you do a lot more of the actual poking and stabbing with the needle. Um, so that part we can leave up to you. If at any point you're like that looks great then <laughs> that's good. When you told me to talk a little about about it, it's my first time, so I'm just going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. looking at yours, I'm looking at mine. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see what this masterpiece turns out. <laughs> you know, they're 
you know, everybody's different. Let me show you something. <laughs> Just needle pelting. Mm -hmm. So if you look at them, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. They all got a little different expression, a little different body shape. These are all made by one person. The same person made all of this. Oh, wow. So every time you do it, it's a little yes. different, and that's part of the beauty of it is that there's so much interesting variation. Yeah. Like somehow, like look at this guy. He's got great big nose. He's <laughs> got little small noses. I've got an in between nose. Anyway, so, I yeah. love it. It's beautiful, right? Who would have thought? Things that you can make. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you see, and, and nothing is like, there's no like super detail, there's no OCD, you know, getting it just exactly right. Um, the thing about the felting is that it's just soft and relaxed and, uh, you know, beautiful. Yeah. Nice for a show. Yeah, everybody's everybody's different, but they're all super cute. So, what class was that for? Was it the same thing? Um, this you is just turned it into something. Yeah, this is um three. This is basically a three D needle felting mm -hmm. where you're making a a three D object rather than a two D object. Um, it's a little bit. I think this is just a little bit harder than this, mm -hmm. but really, once you you know how to use your needle, you know how to manipulate the wool, then... Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The ladies that were here earlier, um, had never, never done any needle felting, and they made very cute snowmen. Uh, one lady of hers was like short and round, and the other made like a tall, skinnier one. Really? It's cute. Yeah. And never did it. Never did it. Yeah. sit and watch a movie and I can do this because you don't have to you know once you kind of get your layout you know you can actually do a lot of this without studying real hard what you're doing mm -hmm. um, so I find that the 2D is nice for just really just sitting and relaxing and um, Netflix or something creative journey start was it with this uh, exactly or did it start with sewing or something else um, I actually come from a more of an art background like a mm -hmm. um, I've done a lot of painting uh, primarily acrylic a little bit of watercolor um, but we growing up we you know we had a sewing machine my mom had a sewing machine and we all grew up fiddling around with it and making little things. Um, I think all of us um, figured out how to use a needle and thread when we were young and we, you know, we could fix the seam or whatever. Um, but I didn't really get into the fiber art things until maybe a year and a half ago. Um, we went on a family trip to Ireland sisters so there were six of us that went to Ireland together and we went to this little artisan village and there was a 
studio there um, that was not even open. Like we just were on the glass like this, just like, what is that? And how do we make it? Like she, this lady did the two dimensional, but she had these landscapes that were like great big ornate little cottages and sheep and flowers and trees and mountains. Mm -hmm. And it was just stunning. And we were flabbergasted by it. And uh, so we came back and um, Danielle, my, my sister Danielle and I were like, we have to learn how to do this. And uh, so I started digging around on the internet and found that there were some kits you could order online. So we ordered kits from a, a company out of Canada and waited for two weeks for them to come with customs and all that. <laughs> and uh, so we were like, come on, please come. <laughs> anyway, they finally came. And uh, so we each made a little scene with little sheep and stuff on it. And it was super cute. And we were absolutely hooked. So uh, we ordered more things. We ordered wool. We ordered all the pieces. We taught my mom. We taught my niece. Um, so we had like family needle felting sitting around in my mom's living room watching TV and, and uh, making stuff and talking about it and all that, and uh, which is wonderful and uh, amazing. Then in May, our oldest sister passed away very unexpectedly, um, just out of the blue. And um, she was all, she was a crocheter and a knitter and a painter and you know sewer and she did all the things and uh, so that was like a that was kind of a big eye opener and we're like you know we should be doing more things that we love mm -hmm. and we should be doing them and helping other people to do things that they love yeah and uh, so that's mm -hmm. her in the middle yeah the one that passed you know yeah. So she used to say, hi, sunshine, every time she, like, messaged or called or whatever. Um, so, yeah. So that's how we do it with you. Get a whole bunch of thick wool of right under where the hoop is, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to get this hoop on there because it'll be very thick. Um, but um, you also don't really want to see much white, if any. Um, sometimes that's a little bit of a balance. Maybe we can. Okay. So you do this out of love, but just a question for us beginners. Is this a expensive um, craft or, I mean, is it inexpensive to do this often? I, or do you think I don't think it's that it's, I yeah. don't think it's expensive. Um, the, I think the kit that we ordered originally was about I think and um, and that that was a, that company was really nice they included so much wool uh, which was really helpful that I like I still have some of that wool and I still use it um, here and there um, but if you order the kits you get the mat which you can use again and again and again the needles as long as you don't break them you can use them again and again um, and the wool is 
actually really not that expensive. Um, it's just a little harder to find, which is uh, part of the reason why we started packaging up wool and just doing some little packages of it for people to buy. Um, I think Hobby Lobby carries a little bit. Um, I don't think our Michaels, the Tykes of Michaels carries any wool at all. They don't have any needle felting. Um, but like we sell them, we sell the mat and three needles for I think $12. And then, uh, you know, wool as you need it. We sell the little packages with the uh, six, four or six colors, depending on, uh, you know, what you're looking for is like $10. And that's a lot of, that'll get, get you a lot of stuff, the little packages. Okay. It's pretty fair. Yeah. So when you're somewhere with a craft of cooking, you know that's expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as crafts go, it's I don't think it is. I mean, you don't need to buy a sewing machine. You don't need any fancy tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you can get these these needles in bulk on Amazon if you want. Um, although they're not quite as good as some of the more specialty kinds, but they're they're functional. So they'll do the, they'll do the job. make a big thing like I mean see this is those three pictures there uh, my sister did that's that's the 2D felt thing mm -hmm. um, and the big tree that's up there um, just on the side of the shelving over there mm -hmm. um, I did that one that's a fairly good size but you know also you can make a little thing and that takes so little wool mm -hmm. to, to make something cute and uh, I've even done like, you know, like a little scrap piece of felt to made like little yeah. tiny pictures. And it, you can do a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's so versatile and I love it. I'll throw it on the ground too. <laughs> you know, like this funny little girl, just for the fun of it. But, you know, just because she, just an idea I had. So, really, really nice. Okay. Yeah. Creative you are, you are creative. I like to do some things. I'm also a graphic designer, so I do, mm. I do digital too. Um, which is nice because I, you know, I designed all our packaging for our kits and all that, so that helps a lot. <laughs> I bet that does, yes.
you take and put it on the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down. Five year old mine is always saying, I promise to work you need to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get those warnings here and there too. Hello, how are you doing today? Oh, just fine, thanks. Good. Welcome. Well, I knit. Oh, wonderful. I knit. Okay. So, um, so I just didn't know what all. I knew you all had classes and things like that, so I didn't know if you all had yarn or, gotcha. you know. So, okay. um, it's cute. Super cute. <laughs> well, thank you. So, yeah. Um, right now, we just have um, yarn from uh, Tanya Robertson. She's up in Signal. She does. Um, spin and dye that yarn, oh, okay. um, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. And the bottom skeins, she includes a little uh, stitch marker with oh, each okay. one, mm -hmm. which is fun. Uh, right. We do have another gal who is supposed to be bringing us her yarn as well, okay. but I think okay. that'll probably be first or second week of January okay. before she brings hers. Um, okay. So we do have more coming, and we're going to add in some like crochet hooks and a few. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, not a lot, but, right, but you some. know, just a little yeah. bit of the things. So, okay. uh, yeah, we just got connected with a company that can help us sell those, which is great. Oh, good. Um, good. So we have more coming. We're just slowly working our way. Right. Seeing right. what people want, because that's kind of what's half the battle. Is right. What what yeah. do people around here want that you right. can't get? Um, right. So, yeah. Well, good. Well, thrilled you're here, and well, thank you. So we'll come back and see what, and kind of check you. I'm, I think um, I see you on Facebook, so I'll, you know, see what y'all are doing, and yeah, yeah. Fun to take a class. We we have lots of classes so, coming for January. We're okay. even starting to add them in for February. Okay. So uh, we've got a lot of sewing classes coming. We have knitting. Um, we have a we're adding a second crochet instructor. Oh, okay. Um, we have weaving. Uh, origami, needle felting, um, lots, lots of okay. things coming. Well, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just wanted to pop in, so thanks That's so fun. much. Well, thank you. I'll be Good back. to see you. All right, take care.
this, this crunchiness. <laughs> it reminds me of eating crunchy food. <laughs> uh, like my favorite snacks are like things that are crunchy, like mm -hmm. chips, crackers, and vegetables, like anything that's just kind of crunch popcorn. I'm like this reminds me of my snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out which ones to carry. Absolutely. Oh my, I, there's a lot. Yes. <laughs> I just I was looking around for one, and I figured to try to find some place a little bit more local rather than going to. Uh, but uh, great. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Um, you might so go. Um, there's a place called Chattanooga Yarn Company in Northgate Mall. Um, they've got a lot of that sort of thing there. Um, and also check back in a few weeks and yeah. see what we come up with. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. are actually too cold for me now. Really? <laughs> Don't even know where I come from. I complain about our winters and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. <laughs> I don't like wearing these sweaters. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from Florida and I'm, I'm so excited mm -hmm. to wear sweaters. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the weather starts dropping and I get excited. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Bust out my fuzzy clothes. <laughs> Sweaters make me itch. <laughs>
where would be your ideal place to go? Yeah, at one point in time, it would have been Florida. Um, if I could, it would probably be out the country now, down in the Caribbean somewhere, <laughs> even further. But yeah, so. <laughs> I tell you, I used to live in the Cayman Islands, and boy, did it get hot. Like, hot. Like, you know, being Florida kid, I thought I knew hot. <laughs> Further down that equator, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's such a difference. It's a it's a it's a great place to snowboard though. You can be there yes. in the winter. Yes. Uh, that that is the way to go because it is actually gorgeous that time of year. That would be ideal. Because our city is a nice it's a nice place. And it's inexpensive. Florida tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the weather. I don't know. It's going to be just regular weather there. <laughs> I can't wear any fuzzy sweaters down there. The normal. <laughs> How long will you be gone? Um, we'll come back either the 31st or the 1st. Mm -hmm. I have family there and I have family that's sister and her family that live in Oregon and they're flying in today. Yeah, today. And um, they've got a little one who's 10 months old. So uh, I'm really excited to see her. <laughs> we haven't seen her since she was two or three months old. So that's a lot of change when they're little, you know, to go from a little tiny baby to standing and saying mama and having some teeth and mm -hmm. all the things so very cute excited to see them pull weeds because i'm sure my flower beds down there look like mm -hmm. chaos <laughs> <laughs> someone to help you maintain it or how often do you get there? Well, um, we used to go back and forth like every two to four weeks. We would make a drive one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, but now <laughs> I'm here a lot. So um, this is my first time back since we started um, kind of pulling this all together. So it's been a couple months at least mm -hmm. since I've been down. Um, so I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna, fortunately, it's not a lot of flower beds. We just have a, like a townhouse, so it's just got a little front yard. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> but we have all these little baby oak trees that grow, and they can grow like far in the in just a 
month or two, so I'm not looking forward to that project at all. <laughs> stretch or little girls or anything like that, you're welcome to do so. That's okay. Do your thing. Uh, so for our little flowers, <clears throat> we have our three colors and you can make as many or as few as you like. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what we're doing is we're just going to take, it doesn't take a whole lot. took one end and wrapped it around my pinky because that was kind of the smallest piece of me that I had mm -hmm. like that. and then just slid it off and you got a little circle and just park it on the end of one of your stems and just a little bit of tacking it doesn't take a lot and what I did is actually I just went in I don't know if you can see it a little bit more just towards the center and just pulled a few of these little pieces down and tucked them in mm -hmm. so that the middle is really where it's holding on and that kind of just left a little circle and that's all you need to do with those and then we'll go back in once we get them all placed and we'll put some a different color in the center mm -hmm. so that we have a little contrast I've 
never find one that I think looks good on me. Really? Like some people just look good in any hat, like they just look super cute. And I feel like when I put a hat on, I just look like a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think that's really the aesthetic I'm going for here. <laughs> you can, if you're a crocheter or a knitter, that you, knitter, that you put your skein of yarn into, and then mm -hmm. it's got a little hole you can feed out, and it just kind of holds your your yarn mm -hmm. ball in place while you're working. So this is what she's come up with so far. I can say that this talk to you guys are your professionals on this <laughs> journey. <laughs> That's what she came up with, huh? This like, what I'm gonna buy in <laughs> home goods somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Creativity DNA is strong with us, I guess. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think I saw this in one of the uh, what's that pier one or somewhere. <laughs> right. She also does signs. She did all of our the sign oh no oh, uh, yes. like the wording of numbers and all that yeah this this was a perfect family business for you guys <laughs> yeah, that was, we turned my house into a sign company for a for a three day weekend and we did all this stuff in my kitchen on the mm -hmm. island and some vinyl everywhere and chaos <laughs> <laughs> it was exciting <laughs> But way cooler than, you know, just having Joe Blue Sign Company make stuff for you. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Keith's my sister that does the pottery, her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, he's crochets. So now we have a group text where we had to check in with her and see what she thought as a crocheter of the <laughs> little pot. And she thinks that it's good. So. <laughs> Brother makes movie props. Mm. <laughs> Which is kind of fun. Mm. really nice about felting as opposed to like painting if something is in the wrong place mm -hmm. <laughs> like when I first was when I did the, this one um, the first one of these I laid out the background and I had like the blue finally running this way and then I was putting the green this way and it just didn't this was bothering me it didn't look right I'm like this is I just I just don't like this and I just peeled the entire thing off, mm -hmm. separated the parts out, put them back down again, just reused background, everything, and then it was right. And the fibers all go the same way. <laughs> so it was, it was amazingly forgiving.
Can you say five kids? Mm -hmm. Two adults. a little boy who's mm -hmm. three and um, and he is just chaos on feet like he's just like <laughs> he's cute as a button but oh my goodness is he funny he's got so much energy and they were here yesterday and uh, like a bomb went off like we had to sweep and cookies on the floor and those boys trains and cars and Upstairs laughing, I'm downstairs, he's upstairs. Well, he got somehow the Bluetooth is, you know, saying everything that I, oh, no. I don't know how they do it, but I'm like, oh, you heard our whole conversation, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beware, because you don't you never know what's sitting in the room with you. <laughs> Whenever you get to that point, mm -hmm. and you become sort of 
um, and put some centers in your little flowers with just the. Like I went through and just made sure that I had a different color in the center of each one. So um, I think I'm going to use my guide because that was helpful, and I'm going to put the same colors in the center. So basically, you're just doing a really tiny piece, and at this point, just ball it up in a little tiny ball. Set it in the middle and just tuck all the loose bits down there. You know.
the kids. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Something to be said for not having to do a bunch of traveling and all that, so we're here. <laughs> I probably won't travel until next month. I usually go visit my mom in Charlotte in January or for her birthday. So is your friend with the sewing machine, is he still local? Mm-hmm. You guys should come and do your monthly classes and bring your machines. And you can both learn and then just have like a, a sewing buddy. Yeah, I bought the machine. He doesn't. <laughs> he just said, oh well, yeah, I can help you because I've done it before back in the day. And then <laughs> I threw on a YouTube video and say, well, come on, got clueless at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, I do, I need to. We are planning to get um, the classroom sewing machines a little bit down the road. Mm -hmm. um, people that don't actually have a machine to see if how they feel about sewing before they commit to buying the machines and all that.
friend a glass of hair scrunchies, tote bag, um, and a few different, you know, kind of smaller projects that you can do in you know, two or three hours or whatever. So it's exciting to see what everybody's they make. How do you feel about it? I like it. You can see. Mm -hmm. are a little tight. So, um, and I may have to do it as well. I have my rules a little thicker. I try to get the thinnest wool, I mean, the thinnest felt that we had here. So I'm not sure what it work, but we shall see. So what we want to do is to set our little block out of the way. Take the wool off our elbow. <laughs> Put it over there so it's tickly. Challenges when you want to cover your felt, but you don't want to do too much because it gets a little thick. But the nice thing is that you can do some careful adjusting. <laughs> Then um, from there, 
Um, you can actually, there's two ways to go about finishing the back. Mm -hmm. uh, some people go with a needle and thread and be able to gather and pull it to all to the back, all the fabric and everything, mm -hmm. um, which I have done, but it ends up to me being a little bulky. So if you want to hang on the wall, it doesn't sit as well as I like it to. Um, so what I do is I will trim mine once I get in the place that I want to add, um, just to make it nice and neat. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it'll sit flush against the wall once you hang it up. So if you want to cut yours, you're welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. your guide. Mm -hmm. Your scissors are just rolling around on the top of it.
pretty lucky ends. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love you. Until next time. Thank you, Marcy.